So I'm excited to be talking to Clayton Coleman. Clayton is the lead contributor to Kubernetes and one of the lead architects here at Red Hat. You know, so when, at one point, you know, we, we, when the Linux container was born, I have to admit, I saw that as something where I, on my laptop, you know, in some cases running a Windows-based laptop, I could do Docker build, Docker run. And now I had this container with my application payload. I had it in a production-like environment. I won't call it a production environment. And that was amazing. That was a new superpower I gained right away. And then with Kubernetes, I got the chance to see it run at scale, right? So in other words, I no longer had to SSH into a machine and Docker run here and SSH and Docker run and SSH and Docker run. You know, it's interesting you say that. It's um, the superpower of Docker was being able to move software from machine to machine. The superpower of Kubernetes is you don't have to think about moving software ever. It just keeps it running for me. It just keeps it running for you. It, Could you talk more about how that project came to be, right? And, sure. and what it meant to bring that uh, Kubernetes into an open source space? and it was uh, interesting. So we, um, when Docker came out, and uh, I think it was the spring of 2013, so they did a demo, and um, it was one of those. It was a great transition for Linux containers, which is they'd existed before. There was a lot of pro there were a lot of products that are projects that um, presage them. But we started looking at okay, well, we really like this characteristic. We think it's going to be successful. We think this changes Linux containers. How do we build a system on top that can take advantage of it? We did a bunch of experimentation um, ourselves with the OpenStack community, and we had a conversation with Google um, as Red Hatters, where they said, "Well, we've got this project that we're thinking about open sourcing, but we're not sure yet." And we started looking at some of the other alternatives in the ecosystem. Uh, we were actually getting ready to say, you know what, there's nothing better out there. We don't really believe in going it alone. That's not, that's not the best outcome for Red Hat users, for Red Hat customers, or for the open source ecosystem. So we were looking at Mesos and, and joining that. And then um, right at about the first DockerCon, um, Google called us up and said, hey, we're going to open source this next week. Are you guys in? We knew it was going to be a big investment to bring this to bear, but we also knew that the combination of, uh, we felt it was the right time in the industry for someone to build something. Um, we liked a lot of the things about the other technologies, but they weren't, they weren't quite general enough, or they were a little too academic, or in some cases they were, they had evolved from a slightly different place, and we could see and knew that there'd be some challenges in broad adoption. So we knew that small clusters were going to be important, and so we had that decision to make, you know, do we invest in something new, and we said, why not? You know, we didn't have a ton, we didn't have a ton of stake in the existing systems, and um, we felt this opportunity, and Google was like, that's great, and so they're like, we're going to make Clayton a committer, and so I'm um, one of the first uh, external committers to Kubernetes, and I was like, okay. And I think it was a really fortunate time for me and for the other Red Hatters who were involved and the other folks in the community, which was um, the team at Google that was open sourcing this, this bunch of senior engineers who knew what they wanted to build. Um, a bunch of the great personalities there, Tim Hawken, Brian Grant, uh, Daniel Smith, um, super sharp engineers who understood the problem domain. And from the Red Hat side, we brought a ton of experience in OpenShift, in open source, uh, in building platform as a service, building simple systems that make it easy for you to get what's done. We understood Linux. We worked with a lot of enterprise customers. We worked with enterprise customers. We knew what all the enterprise you know, ticky marks were gonna be. We knew there was an opportunity. Um, it was a great, it was a great initial um, seed of a bunch of people who understood the problems that they wanted to go solve and had a mandate from their companies to collaborate in the open to build something that we can take the lessons we've learned and really make something compelling and easy to use um, that benefits most people, that takes some of the mistakes we made and prevents it. And it was just that mix that for the first, I want to say, year, year and a half, it was people with a vision and a mandate and the experience to know what not to do. We didn't get everything right, but we were able to build a pretty solid core. And then we kind of made that transition as you know, Kubernetes took off, um, tons of people got interested. As a technology, a lot of those decisions were made early, and I think we got things most right. As a community, I think we were almost more successful in, um, and it's hard, you know, whenever you have a foundational technology, you know, the, the risk of, Oh, I want to fix this thing. I opened a PR. Oh, I merged it. Great. And then half the world's banking systems fall over. Mm -hmm. I'm always super cognizant of that. Like we have a responsibility as an open source community to keep these things running. How do you balance that with being open and inviting to someone who is running this themselves, wants to make a contribution that helps them? And how do you steer that work through? And the success of Kubernetes is almost terrifying because 
we get you know, we have something like uh, 100 pull requests open a day, and there's not 100. There's not bandwidth for to look at 100 changes a day. And so trying to split the community up into um, groups that can work well together. Um, it's kind of the, the DevOps microservices model uh, in Kubernetes, which is we tried to learn from some of the things that we were building tools to endorse for our users of, hey, you want it to be easy to run lots of different applications. Well, how do we split Kubernetes itself up? How do we structure it so that team A and team B collaborate on APIs, not on um, you know, sharing code? And it's been a, it's been a pretty crazy journey. Um, I'm pretty proud of what we've built. Um, it is interesting, five years on, that in my opinion, most of Kubernetes is done. Um, and that if we succeed, it's because the, you can build on top of it, which as we said before, you know, that layering on top, being able to go build your own things. If you can do that, then Kubernetes will truly exist. It's so, the kernel and then you build on top. And, and I think we're still trying to see that come to fruition. But I think you know, we've, we've seen enough to know that we didn't make any huge mistakes. Um, we made them in a few. Um, and just making sure that the community is strong as we start moving into more of a, um, a stable period in Kubernetes. How do we keep the community excited? How do we um, keep contributions coming in? How do we, do our, how do we uh, live up to our responsibilities to the people who run us, not to break them when we roll a software update out? So a lot of challenges. Um, the challenges have shifted almost continuously the, as we've gone through. Well, what's interesting uh, to me in particular, right, you, know, you talked about the history there, and I love the fact that you gave us some insider information about how that came to be. <laughs> but one thing that's really, I think, interesting to a lot of people, and they may not really appreciate this or understand that, or understand this point, when we made the bet on Kubernetes several years ago, we had no idea it would do what it has done today, right? You know, we made a big bet, we worked with Google, and we ensured that basically we were going to bring this technology to market. I mean, we brought it to market for supported enterprise customers in 2015. Right. Right. And a week before it went GA. Right. In the community, yeah. Thousands of customers across tens of thousands of applications. And so we have great experience with the technology. And now Kubernetes and OpenShift are synonymous with the hybrid cloud. Right. And when people think multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, how do I want to stretch my application from this data center to that data center to this cloud to that cloud, Kubernetes is now the entire story that seems to be the way people are going to do that going forward. As much has gone on in the last five or six years um, on OpenShift and Kubernetes and Linux, um, I really can look back at that and say, you know, our job is to go out there and to build something that helps people get their jobs done so they don't even have to worry about it anymore. And maybe you don't quite agree yet. You know, we'll always, I think we'll always have those, uh, those bits that we need to go fix, but I'm pretty excited about where we've gone. Mm -hmm.